Because I love her. Just remember who said it first. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 forgotten rom coms that deserve to be classics. I don't expect you to remember me. I wasn't a blonde then. But you did ask me out, and it broke my heart to say no. For this list, we'll be looking at lesser known romantic comedies that tug at our heartstrings. If spoilers break your heart, it's time to grab the tissues. Spoilers are ahead. Which underrated rom com makes your heart sing? Let us know in the comments. Number 10 Deliver Us from Eva. Eva knows exactly what she wants out of her life. Her personality is strong enough to the point of influencing every aspect of her three sisters' lives, much to their partner's dismay. Today, we women raise our voices against tyranny, crudeness, and playoff games. And that is it, gentlemen. End of story, the fat lady's singing! Out of the room. In order to take control of their lives, Mike, Tim and Daryl pay Mike's pal Ray a large amount of money to make Eva fall in love with him, in the hopes that the two will start their lives together elsewhere. Eva isn't your stereotypical rom-com lead. She takes charge in every aspect of her life and doesn't need Prince Charming to rescue her. Yeah, you know, I've been through all the basic types, you know, the, the player players who think women are disposable toys, the confused man who doesn't know if he wants to date you or your brother, <laughs> the, the lazy ones who live at home with their mother and expect you to pick up the check. If it weren't for Ray's hiring and his initial deception, the film could be said to depict a relatively healthy and equal relationship between a black couple. Unfortunately, we still don't see enough positive examples in romantic comedies. You said love is a choice? Well, I love you, and I'm not leaving. I'm gonna show up at your job every day. I'm gonna send you gifts and tell you I'm sorry until you understand that I will not live without you. Number 9. Down With Love during the 1960s, the patriarchy and sexist ideas about a woman's place in society were rampant. In Down With Love, writer Barbara Novak is determined to change the narrative once and for all. Barbara writes a book with the same title, encouraging women to determine their own views on love and intimacy over tying the knot. By level three, she can have sex whenever she likes, without love, and enjoy it the way a man does. A la carte. Barbara's strong commitment to embodying down with love qualities is soon threatened when her nemesis, fellow writer Catch a Block, seems to undermine her best-selling beliefs by winning her heart. I'm gonna write the expose of the century so the world will know once and for all that deep down, all women are the same. They all want the same thing, love and marriage. Even Miss Barbara down with love Novak and I am going to prove it. This aesthetically pleasing flick deserves more recognition for its portrayal of independent and forward-thinking women of the 60s while maintaining a fun and flirty rom-com feel. We're down with that. Number 8. The Decoy Bride Did you sign the register? You saw me, why? Is that the legal bit? Thinking on the bus I may have signed my own name. So? Would you marry a stranger to protect the one you love? This thought-provoking question is explored in The Decoy Bride, starring David Tennant. Tennant's character James is set to marry A-list actress Lara, but their nuptials are overshadowed by the threat of meddling paparazzi. In order to distract a persistent photographer, her team hatches a plan to stage a wedding and use a decoy bride to pose as the movie star. Who is this? John Johnson. Toilet girl? Unfortunately, the decoy bride's wit and warmth weren't experienced by many moviegoers during its 42 weeks in theatres, or should we say theatre, as the British flick only opened in one domestically. 
Its limited exposure doesn't take away from the film's tenderness and refreshing ability to treat both leading ladies fairly as equal love interests, though. And you're back on Hague now because? Oh, I'm on a sheep stealing right. Yeah. I mean, I thought I might grab myself a woman at the same time, but predominantly it's a sheep snatching thing. Number seven, she's out of my league. On a scale of one to ten, how much do you believe in yourself? Lovable nerd Kirk, who his friend thinks is a five on the attractive scale, falls for a career-driven and perfect ten Molly. That is a chasm. Chasm? Chasm. And you can't jump more than two points. Despite their obvious chemistry and how easily their lives seem to mesh after they start dating, they are constantly reminded of their opposite scores on the so-called attractiveness scale. Kirk then starts obsessing over whether they'd be able to work out. I'm unattractive, I'm out of shape, I'm uncoordinated, I've never been to Europe, I'm not a college graduate, I drive a neon. <laughs> I like your neon. I'm, oh, God, come on. Molly, look at me. The film features all of the rom-com elements we love, including quirky family members and a hilarious friend group, but it stands out for the way it thoughtfully encourages viewers to remember how important it is to love and believe in yourself above all. I, I, I don't remember what the specific question was, but uh, I do. You do? Well. I will. <laughs> Number six, Fever Pitch. Ah, baseball. The treasured American pastime of family, friends, and fresh hot dogs can inspire excitement, joy, and even personal transformation. If I keep these seats, all I think about every time I'm here is, is what I give up for them. Fever Pitch tells the story of Ben, played by Jimmy Fallon, a man who, for better or for worse, remains extremely devoted to his childhood team, the Boston Red Sox. The Red Sox have seemingly influenced every decision Ben has ever made. That is, until he starts dating Lindsay, played by Drew Barrymore. Throughout their relationship, Lindsay helps him understand the difference between passion and priorities. Hey, Benny boy, I still can't believe you're not at the Yankee game. Yeah, well, if the Yankees look that good in a dress, I'd be at the game. Though they break up at one point, they're ultimately able to overcome their issues and reunite by communicating effectively and showing how devoted they are to each other. You love me enough to sell your tickets. I love you enough not to let you. What do you say we try to do all of it? Now there's a home run. Number five, take this waltz. Sometimes a relationship isn't always slow dancing and fireworks. In Take This Waltz, Michelle Williams and Seth Rogen play Margot and Lou, who are experiencing a lull in their marriage. Don't you think it's a bit weird that we've just been sitting here without talking? What are we gonna talk about? We we live together. We know everything already. Then what is the point of going out to dinner? After she has a spontaneous meet-cute on a plane with Daniel, Margot starts to feel again and again like Lou doesn't seem interested in reigniting their spark. I just use you. It takes all my courage and you're teaching me to be completely and utterly without bravery. Meanwhile, Daniel makes her laugh and feel seen in a way she hasn't in a long time. So she chooses the potential of having a happier life with Daniel over repairing her marriage. I feel like if I begged to have you stay, I'd be humiliating myself. Take This Waltz swaps traditional romantic comedy elements for a realistic depiction of marriage and gives viewers a chance to see Seth Rogen play a serious leading man role. May we have this dance? Number 4. The Opposite of Sex In The Opposite of Sex, Christina Ricci plays Dee Dee, 
a pregnant teen whose misguided views on sexuality shape her worldview. If you think I'm just plucky and scrappy and all I need is love, you're in over your head. I don't have a heart of gold and I don't grow one later, okay? After moving in with her half-brother Bill, Dee Dee meets Lucia, played by Lisa Kudrow. Dee Dee tells Lucia that she thinks it's believes it's too bad that Bill, whose previous partner Tom died from AIDS, is gay. What do they teach you in Louisiana? It's roughly, you reap what you sow, if you're gay. Though Lucia challenges Dee Dee's dangerous ideology, Dee Dee's subsequent decisions ultimately lead to her apologizing to Bill for all that she's done. The film sets itself apart from other entries on this list by its darker approach to showing the way sex can negatively impact relationships through creating unwanted attachment. Dee Dee's jarring narration also helps set her apart from your typical upbeat rom-com heroine. Sex always ends in kids or disease or like, you know, relationships. That's exactly what I don't want. I want the opposite of all that. Because it's not worth it. Not really, is it? Number three, Crossing Delancey. Yes, she's a beauty. Ain't she a beauty? Coo, coo, coo. Excuse me, but I don't know what you think you're doing. If rom-coms have taught us anything, there's no better place to find love than in New York. Multiple rom-coms have captured this feeling, including Crossing Delancey, which follows Isabel, a bookish 30-something single woman who feels quite comfortable avoiding commitment. It's not like I'm gonna say no if someone walks into my life tomorrow. I'm not canceling out that possibility. But Bubby, please listen to me. I am not, I repeat, not holding my breath. When her Bubby hires a matchmaker to help a reluctant Isabel speed up the process of finding Mr. Right, her single gal status is threatened after she finds herself undeniably attracted to her potential suitor. Though less well known than some other rom coms of the 80s, this film is a charming love letter to a beloved city and a life shaping relationship. That's romance. How should I talk to Isabel? Number 2 The American President. We expect presidents to appear dignified and their main focus to be in serving their country when they're in office. The American president rejects those ideas and tells a story of a president who leads with his heart. 200 pairs of eyes are focused on you right now with two questions. Who's this girl and why is the president dancing with her? Michael Douglas plays President Andrew Shepard, a widower who realizes he's ready to find love again when he meets lawyer Sidney Wade, played by Annette Benning. President Shepard and Sidney learn to navigate their relationship with grace in spite of endless critical opinion. Come to think of it, how did you get this number? How did I get the number? That's a good question. Um, I don't know, probably the FBI. Written by Aaron Sorkin, the American president tends to be overshadowed by his later series, The West Wing. But the American president includes Sorkin's ability to write lovable characters who keep viewers' attention. How'd you finally do it? Do what? Manage to give a woman flowers and be president at the same time. Well, it turns out I've got a rose garden. Martin Sheen even delivers a tender performance as a political figure too. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. A lot like love, friends become lovers over time. You're not too late. I'm not getting married. My sister is. The Fighting Temptations. A pathological liar works to redeem himself while falling in love. Some boys aren't always wrong. Experience has taught me that fighting temptation makes you strong. Only you. A woman meets her soulmate while chasing a childhood fantasy. That's how I knew you were oh. here with me on the phone oh. from the airport. But I thought I'd never find you. I understand. I know. I know. Hmm. Paper Heart, 
a documentarian falls in love while creating a documentary about love. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Strictly Ballroom We know Baz Luhrmann knows a thing or two about romance, but what happens when he brings spice into ballroom dancing? The answer can be found in 1992's Strictly Ballroom. Aquí y aquí. Mira. This underrated rom-com follows Scott Hastings, who dedicates himself to training for the Pan Pacific Championship. After many zany missteps out of Scott's control, he finds his perfect partner in Fran, a shy dancer whose presence is always painfully overlooked. Where did that come from? It's a step I've been working on at home. Show me. Strictly Ballroom contains aspects we love from more well-known Baz Luhrmann films. Paul Mercurio and Tara Maurice's chemistry is as addicting to watch as Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes in Romeo and Juliet. The fearless bohemian spirit of Moulin Rouge is also on display. To live with fear is like to half live. I mean, is a life half lived. There are certainly no missteps. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.